Hello and welcome to Kanakya International School's talk show, Master Talk, a series of talks consisting of the Inspiration Talks, the Aspiration Talks, and the Perspiration Talks. During the Inspiration Talk series, the students get to meet and listen to the best minds and successful individuals from various works of life who inspire them to dream big and to cultivate a growth mindset. Everyone admires the great work of famous personalities, but nobody counts the enormous sacrifices and efforts they've made to achieve that feat. Nothing gets done unless you have a strong desire to perspire to achieve the otherwise thought impossible. In the Inspiration Talk series, distinguished people and youth icons who have achieved the unthinkable share their life experiences to motivate the students to work harder towards achieving their own dreams. These talks encourage our students to step out of their comfort zone. Someone said it right, life begins when you step out of your comfort zone. This Master Talk series will inspire and teach you valuable lessons to achieve your dreams and goals. We are excited to bring our talk in the Inspiration series to you all. I request our principal, Ms. Suchi Shukla, to introduce our speaker for today. Our guest today is a renowned filmmaker and director, Dr. Vibha Bakshi. Welcome, ma'am. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to have you here amongst us today. Dr. Vibha studied at Boston University and started her career as a journalist. She soon realized that she wanted to do more for the world and to reach out to the masses. She got into the career of making films. She is now known for her films that highlight issues of gender inequality. Her most notable films are The Daughters of Mother India and Sunrise. For those, she has won four national film awards, the highest recognition in Indian cinema. In Sunrise, Ms. Bakshi used a unique storyline. The film showcases men from India's seat of patriarchy, Haryana, and talks about how they are trying to break the shackles of patriarchy and fight for women's rights. Sunrise was also voted as the best documentary at the New York Indian Film Festival and earned two nominations at the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. It was screened at the Dubai Expo and the 50 global leaders who watched it signed a pledge to do their bit for gender equality in their country. Police agencies in India use Daughters of Mother India as a gender sensitization tool for officers and it is also the part of the curriculum for more than 200 schools. In 2021, Sunrise was selected by the United Nations to be screened as a part of the UN Women's Global He for She campaign across 71 countries. A truly commendable achievement. Recently, the film was screened in our own school after we had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Vibha ourselves. So please join me in welcoming a talented filmmaker whose movies have ignited fire in our hearts and have made her the role model for women and men all over the world, Dr. Vibha Bakshi. Thank you, ma'am, for being here and agreeing to speak to our students. The students are keen to ask you a number of questions regarding the hard work that you have put into your journey and how they may emulate that hard work to achieve their dreams. We have Prisha Agarwal, Rushan Shah, Prisha Shah, Naisha Bansal, Pratham Mehta, Elina Shah, and Mrunmay Gore in the forum today. I will now hand over the lead to them. Thank you, ma'am, for that articulate introduction. I would just like to welcome all of our viewers to this series. Thank you, Dr. Bakshi, for spending some time with us this afternoon. I believe I speak for all of us when I say that we are thrilled to be having this discussion with you. 
Ma'am, firstly, I would like to start off by saying that we are all extremely inspired by the work you've put in for our community and the world society as a whole. You started your career working as a business reporter and anchor at CNBC in New York. What inspired you to start making movies? First of all, I just want to say I'm absolutely humbled and honored at the introduction. Thank you so much, ma'am. I am so happy to be here because I see such a fully charged group here and I know you all are the future change leaders. So thank you very, very much for having me here. I am absolutely thrilled to be part of this. Um, how did I start my career? Well, I graduated uh, from Boston University that gave me both the craft and the conviction that one day each one of us has the power to change the world. So I graduated uh, doing journalism, started my career as um, doing news as an anchor reporter, and very, I think maybe about two or three years into my working as an anchor reporter, I realized that there has to be more than just the headlines. And rather than just looking for the big, big headlines, I began searching for urgent and burning issues. And that's when I realized that there has to be more. I'm very fortunate that it was during this time that I met my future uh, producer and director that I would work with, who is an Academy Award-winning filmmaker, Marianne Delio. And that's when I shifted into documentary filmmakers. She has won the Academy Award for a film called Chernobyl Heart. And I'm very fortunate that she was not only um, my co-director and co-producer, but she became a mentor for me. Thank you, ma'am. That resonated with all of us here. In appreciation of how exceptional your film Sunrise is, what makes it stand out in front of the other countless movies, documentaries, and films currently existing? Well, I think when it comes to urgent and burning issues, I hope, and especially when we're talking about gender justice, I hope a hundred films come out and we don't stop talking and every filmmaker is striving to do their best. Um, as far as Sunrise is concerned, um, the team and I took a very, very conscious decision that when it comes to issues which are sensitive, we have to make sure that we sensitize our viewers. Because it's very, very easy when you take up these burning and urgent issues, it's very easy to sensationalize the issue, but very hard to sensitize the audience. And I think with all my films, I will continue to strive that however hard the issue may be, I hope I leave the viewers with hope. Because without hope, no fight can be won. And this is a fight that we cannot afford to lose. I agree. And since this is the inspirational series for the Master Talk, what attracted you to take the responsibility to educate others on gender equality and take up this particular issue to spread awareness? So as a filmmaker, I believe um, you don't get to choose a subject or a film. The film will choose you. So I think uh, the intent has never been to either um, educate anyone or um, you know, uh, try and give a lesson to anyone. I've just tried my best to tell a story. And actually, all the credit goes to the incredible people who are featured in my documentary because really they are the brave ones. They have always dared to break the silence. So full credit to all of them. I just happen to tell the story. And if by telling a powerful story, people are inspired, then we feel that is success. Wow, ma'am, that was truly inspirational. Could you please throw some light on the struggles and obstacles you had to get to, through to get to where you are right now? So anyone who's uh, pursuing 
a career in filmmaking, and especially if it's documentary filmmaking, I have to warn you all that there are far more trials than triumphs. Um, this is a journey where the knocks are very, very hard. So you really have to have that commitment to get up. And that's what I would tell um, you know, anyone who's taking this um, as their career. Um, it's a very hard field because change is never easy. Any time when we are trying to make change happen, it's the hardest thing to do. And we are using the power of storytelling to make change happen. So there have been a lot um, of trials, um, including danger to one's life. Um, so when I was filming Sunrise, I was um, following um, the story of a gang rape survivor. She was gang raped by eight men, and they saw me in court. And after that, I just knew that I was being watched. Um, and I remember, um, you know, during the filming, I asked for police protection. And at that time, a very junior cop asked me, what police protection? Kya hone wala hai? Ek truck aakar aapka accident ho jayega. So these are genuine risks. And I would tell everybody, please make calculated risks when you're doing it, because it's not just about your own safety, it's about the safety of the entire crew. But I also believe one thing, when your intent and emotion is right, the universe conspires to make things happen. I came out of Sunrise as a woman filmmaker, I was questioning the patriarchs. It was one of the hardest things I've done, but we not only came out intact, we came out victorious. And that's when I believe there has to be a higher force that is working with you. Thank you, ma'am. Noted. As an eminent filmmaker, what is your responsibility to your audience? I don't know about eminent. I'm still struggling. But uh, um, what is my, um, what's the question? What is my? What is your responsibility towards your audience? Oh, I'm glad you asked this question. Um, as a documentary filmmaker, I would really say this again and, and again. It is very easy to sensationalize issues, but very hard to sensitize the audience. So when it comes, the biggest message I would say with all of you, when you take up urgent and burning issues, please be very careful on how these issues are addressed. And I'll give you an example. In Sunrise, the survivor had faith in us. She gave a detailed account on what happened to her, and I have hours of footage on it. I used two minutes in the film. Because a point comes between what you have to do is right and wrong. And this is something that I will tell you all again and again. When I take up issues, I can either leave the country burning or I can ignite hope. I can remove all the faith and hope you have or I can leave you with that burning desire that change is possible. And as I say that, I will always leave my viewers with hope. Wow. After watching the movie, I can guarantee that all of us viewers have, had, have gotten that hope to the highest mark oh. it has ever been. And that, again, is another victory. And I say this, you all are the most important audience. You are the generation that can change the narrative on gender injustice. So this makes me very, very happy, and this gives me the strength to continue to do what I do. After listening about the risks that were associated with making the documentaries, what are you most proud of in your uh, professional experience and why? I would say um, I feel really happy that the team that I started working with 
we have not changed. So I just remove the credits from one film to another, and we don't have a single change in credit, which just shows that this team, our film team, has become family. And when you are taking up such difficult issues, you really need that core team to stand by you because there's so many things that are going wrong that you want someone there who's saying, we're watching your back. That's astonishing. Well, we typically refer to feminism when women and men are treated um, the same way and they have the same rights, right? In relevance to that, how inclusive do you think the feminism movement currently is? And what are your thoughts on making this movement more inclusive for all? So, you know, when we, um, when we talk about women's issues, um, no, let me, let me say this again. When we talk about gender justice, or more like gender injustice, we always say it's a women's issue. When a woman is raped, how is it a woman's issue? Everyone is in this together. Gender injustice is one of the biggest human rights violations. Gender violence when we talk about. And I think we need to change that narrative. We have to create a bold and united force against gender injustice. And when we talk about this movement, it's very important that boys and girls, men and women, stand in solidarity and create a united force. And that's when we know that we will be able to have a safer and more equitable world. Yes, ma'am, you're absolutely right, and I couldn't agree more. Do you think that the blame throughout the years for rape has been put on the victims instead of the perpetrators themselves? And why do you think the society is so quick to condemn the victims? And what are your thoughts on educating the uh, society to hold the rapists accountable instead? I'm so glad you brought up this um, question. And it's one of the um, uh, most important question that must be addressed when we're dealing with gender violence. Um, if you look at newspapers, you all should pay attention. They will write, woman brutally raped in so-and-so place. By who? We never hear who. Why are the headlines reading like this? It should say, three men gang raped a woman. Again, even the headlines, the onus is with a woman. When I was filming Daughters of Mother India, which was right after uh, the brutal rape and murder of the medical intern in the moving bus, Again, when the police are taking down the report, the first thing they will say is, don't file it. Aapki izzat chali jayegi. What shame? The shame belongs to those who've committed the crime and not the survivor. And this has to change. We have to put into account who is responsible. And that is why Sunrise was a game changer. The woman unveiled in the film and said, the shame is not mine. And this is what we have to give strength to all the survivors and their families to put the blame where it belongs. And for this, it will have to be a civil movement. We cannot just leave this to the courts and the police. We, as a civil society, first has to change that mentality. Right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I am in complete accordance with you. We were also happy to hear that the United Nations has streamed your documentary for the He For She campaign across 71 countries. How did they recognize your movement and your film, Sunrise? It was, again, you know, um, I, I cannot tell you how many rounds I made at the United Nations before this happened. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, after the film is made, the journey is tougher. 
And I have to say that um, we had the head of UN Women India, Nishta Satyam, who played a very critical role in bringing the United Nations Under Secretary General to India to unveil Sunrise. And I think what really happened is when she watched a full house standing ovation for Sunrise, it was our first screening, I think the message had gone that this is working. And that's why I say full credit to our Sunrise heroes because the kind of ovation they got I don't think any of our superstars in India could get it. Um, I remember uh, that evening, the film finished, people got up, and then, you know, speeches happened, people just stood. For 20 minutes, people just stood cheering our Sunrise heroes. We couldn't speak because the thunderous ovation and well-deserved ovation they got would not stop. And that's when um, we um, got the news. She came on stage and Sunrise became part of the movement. Um, you know, when you are unleashing a movement on the ground, it's never one person. We've had such formidable partners. Weber Shanwick is one of the biggest PR companies in the world. They became our strongest allies and pro bono made sure that the message was amplified. And they have been our partners for both the documentaries in India and have played a critical role in making it into a movement. Wow, that's amazing. I think one of all of our favorite things about Sunrise is its unique title. So could you please tell us what gave you the idea to come up with such a distinctive title? We loved it the time we heard it. Sunrise, because it's time for the sons to rise. We keep talking about, oh, the women need to rise, the girls need to rise. The time has come for the sons to rise. Actually, I was in New York and I was with the global head of Weber Shanwick and I was discussing the film and that's when she said, she's an American, amazing, incredible woman called Gail, who said, what about sunrise? Because I was telling her that in India, unless the sun is not born in a family, the sun doesn't rise in that house. And that's when she said, well, this film could be called Sunrise. And we loved it. So it's got two meanings to it, right? Yes. They say now the Kulka Deepak is not born. Now we are saying this is the real sunrise. The real man, this is how this Kulka Deepak needs to grow up. Wow, ma'am, thank you. That's truly amazing. But every action we take has a personal motive. So what did this movie personally mean to you and what message did it convey to society? So whenever I screen films, people uh, automatically presume that I have um, daughters. I don't. I am a mother of two sons and I believe I carry a greater responsibility on how I raise my boys. And I think both these films are a cry of my conscience. And I really hope that I am able to raise the sunrise that we are talking about. And that's when I say respect. We start with the foundation of respect. And boys need to see that at home. And for me, um, Personally, my husband Vishal is our biggest, biggest role model. He is really a he for she hero. And I think our sons could not get a better role model because he has shown what a true man means. It is something we all, all boys, all men, we should and we will incorporate in our That's lives. That's wonderful to hear. Yes. Uh, Sunrise focused on the grave inequality and harassment that women are still victims to in yes. rural parts of India. Do you believe that this indicates that India is still far from truly being modern or are these problems across other parts of the world, places you would typically uh, call or coin model, I mean modern, sorry. So I'm, I'm again very happy you brought this up. 
um, uh, through my journey as a filmmaker and through my associations with United Nations and doing um, films both in uh, India and the United States. Um, in fact, I did um, the Emmy Award winning campaign for the US government to stop violence against women. And I have to say, unfortunately, gender bias, gender inequality, gender injustice is a global reality. And there is no country that is immune to this. The, the degree varies, but this is a global battle. And that is why um, even when I was filming Sunrise, Sunrise is not a story from rural India. Again, it is a story that happens all over India. It happens all over the world. And in fact, Sunrise has been called, it's a film on humanity. I agree. And I'm sure working on and releasing Sunrise was a profound challenge which required you to hold strong to your moral, moral values. So could you please share with us what is going on in your mind as you looked into that particular case for the first time? Um, you know, there are so many dilemmas that happen and it happens on the editing floor. Because what is to be taken? What is not to be taken? And um, again, one of the uh, issues that I discussed is I have a survivor who has basically spilled a heart out to me and given me a detailed account on what happened to her for the past one year. And these are the moral decisions that you have to take on the editing floor on the fine line between sensationalizing the issue and sensitizing the audience. Um, the same thing happened when I was filming, um, when I was working on my film, Daughters of Mother India. I had rape and the police, and that is a deadly combination. And what we did is, I could have focused on everything that's going wrong in the police station. I had unbelievable access. I had access to the rapists. I had access to files. And that's when you have to take that decision. Is it about making headlines? Or is it about unleashing a movement? And I focused on the people who are doing good. Because this is what you want to see. If you want to unleash a movement, why would I focus any of my time on giving any airtime to the rapists or those who are doing wrong. But the story may not be that exciting, but I will continue to do what is right. And you know the biggest lesson we've learned? In spite of doing the right thing and focusing on those who are doing good, we saw a viewership like no other. So believe in doing the right thing, everything else will flow. Ma'am, at least I believe that the film Sunrise was truly impactful. Especially the part when Jitender stands up for his wife, fights a court case, and even sells his land to give his wife the closure that she deserves. What are your views on this? Do you think that your uh, film had the intended impact that you meant for it to have on its viewers? At every point, I can tell you, we gave 110%. Um, Himanti Sarkar is one of the biggest Bollywood directors. She just finished um, um, editing Amir Khan's Lal Singh Chadda. She's done Airlift. She's done English Winglish. She's uh, known for um, very strong and powerful films. She spent eight months editing Sunrise, which is far longer than any Bollywood film. Um, at the end, um, you know, it's the viewer's verdict, and it went beyond what we expected. Um, we are most grateful that we um, got the Swaran Kamal, the gold at the National Film Awards, which is the toughest awards to get, and we got the UN partnership. 
So I think in terms of all the stars aligning, it could not have been better. But once again, I can tell you that the biggest triumph and the biggest heroes are, of course, our sunrise, our sunrise heroes who, in spite of all the obstacles, continued fighting. And in fact, we were in court when the verdict came out um, that freed all the rapists, and it was one of our darkest moments. But when he told me, I will fight, and I will fight till the end, I said, we have found the end for sunrise. Because there are no fairy tale endings, but you have to have that conviction to be able to continue the fight, and he did it. Wow, ma'am, that was truly inspirational. I think I speak for us all when I say that we greatly admire all of your efforts. After watching the film, it is evident that we can alleviate gender inequality if both men and women yes. can change for the better. If you could give a piece of advice to all the sons of the new generation, what would it be? I would really um, begin by saying that, and you're already there, when I see, you know, the men on this panel, the boys on the panel, I feel so inspired that we are all moving in the right direction. I would say, question those who are around you. I'm telling all of you, it's hard to change the world, but it is not so difficult to change the people around you. Have the courage to ask difficult questions. When you see wrong happening, speak out. Because it is, these, it is these things that you do, you may think of them as small, but they can unleash global movements. So start the change at home. Start thinking about equality at home. And even if it means you get into trouble with your parents, this is called good trouble. Go all out there and get into that good trouble. Advice received and uh, already applied in our lives. Lovely. <laughs> if you had to make a sequel to Sunrise, what do you think it would focus on? What would you want it to focus on? A similar case or maybe something different? So I started with Daughters of Mother India, which focused on um, the issue of rape and gender violence. And here I brought in the police. Because unless the police is not sensitized, justice will not be delayed, it will be denied. After that, the next step to the movement was to make men a part of the movement for change. And that is Sunrise. If I now had to do the sequel, I would do it on very strong women. And I would showcase to the world the strength of what it means to be a woman. Maybe I'd call it Shakti. <laughs> wow, ma'am. I can't, if you are making a sequel, I can't wait to see it. I know we will all learn from it. Was there anything important that you wanted to add to Sunrise that did not make the final cut of the documentary? Um, actually, there were, uh, there were a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, we had captured so many powerful moments, but then as a director, you have to take these very tough stands to say, cut, not happening. And I think that's what makes a good film, when you have the discipline to say, um, cut, it won't make it. Um, they were very difficult decisions, but I would say, in a documentary, keep it simple. Don't get your viewer lost, because you will get them so lost that they will lose the issue. Um, full credit to my team. I think they're one of the most talented team. Uh, my director of photography, Atar Singh Seni, has shot the film with one camera and no lights and no retakes. Um, I think it's tougher than doing any kind of Bollywood film where you don't get a second chance. Um, uh, the sensitivity with which he shot it, um, uh, the commitment with which Hemanti cut the film, I think it's a cumulative effort that made Sunrise. 
Ma'am, your journey to success is truly inspiration, is inspirational and truly exceptional. So, what are some things that you learned from making Daughters of Mother India and how did you incorporate them into Sunrise? I think there was a moment in um, Daughters of Mother India where we have a um, five-year-old who is gang raped. Um, and um, I've discussed this before, when I, when I saw the bloodied body um, and took her to the hospital, um, uh, I think it was one of the toughest, um, I think the hardest uh, moments for me when I saw a five-year-old who was gang raped. And I uh, called up my husband and I said, I cannot tell the story. I, I don't have the courage to tell the story. And my husband said, you cannot unsee what you've seen. And the only change that can happen is when the film is made and a life is changed. And I think the biggest lesson I've learned is strength. There are so many disturbing moments that we've had, but I've always told myself, get up, Vibha. You have to tell the story. You mentioned that Haryana is the seat of patriarchy in India. Despite this fact, how did you get the people of Haryana to cooperate with you and what were few of the challenges you faced in the process? So as a filmmaker, as a woman filmmaker, I go into what is called as India's seat of patriarchy. So you can just imagine the cooperation on that level. So for the first three months, nobody spoke to me. It, I just kept asking questions and either nobody was making eye contact or nobody was speaking to me. So let me tell you, that's a very humbling experience. <laughs> um, clearly, I had no ego and I continued the journey. And what I realized is that unless I don't, um, I, unless I don't stay on the ground, I have to live there and win the trust of the people. And that's what I did. We just parked ourselves there, and I said, I will first win the trust, and then things will flow. And after I had won the trust of the people, it was the people who were leading us. But I remember the first person that I met was India's biggest cup leader. I don't know if you know what a cup leader is, but they control the entire society, but they work outside the law. So basically, they run the show. And the first thing he told me was, there is no place for women here. Today, that same cup leader is screening sunrise across 800 villages in Haryana. That is victory, right? Yeah. So a lot changed during our journey, and a lot of people changed during our journey. Ma'am, you evidently overcame your struggles and challenges during this process of filmmaking. However, filmmaking itself is so laborious and a tough job. So what keeps you motivated? How does your family support you throughout this process? My family is my everything. I don't think I could do what I do without my husband, without my two boys, without my in-laws, without my parents. Um, when you have a family that believes in your vision, you are unstoppable. And that's what happened. Um, they have given me so much strength to do what I do because there is so much fear while we are doing it, but they have really helped me become the best version of myself. And many times, um, when I look at my two boys, I hope that when I get really tired and I'm exhausted or things are not working out, I just say, maybe through my films, there could be some, some ray of hope for a better tomorrow. And that better tomorrow, my children will enjoy. And I think that gives me the strength. 
And of course, we have um, everyone gets their strength from many other sources. But I am very grateful to God for giving me such a beautiful family. Wow, ma'am, that's so beautiful. I do believe that family does fuel our strength. Yes. From the perspective of a director, filmmaker, and producer, how does the, having traveled multiple places in India, how does the severity of gender inequality differ in different parts of India? Um, it depends, uh, of course, from state to state, but I think the most pronounced uh, disparity, unfortunately, is in the north of India. Um, it's just, um, it's a combination of maybe um, just a very, very strong patriarchal attitude and um, lesser education. So that combination um, really can derail uh, the movement strongly. Gender equality and awareness about rape and women's rights is still a sensitive issue in many parts of the world, including India. That's right. How did you deal with critics and people who were wanting to suppress your cause as you spoke about risk for your own, risking your own life to make the documentary? How do you think you could uh, maybe not let them get into your head or go strong with your cause? So, um, you know, when you make any kind of film, after that it's everybody's opinion, right? So right from the person on the road to, you know, anybody, has an opinion on it and I mean that's the risk uh, you take as a filmmaker but there's also the glory of being a filmmaker and there is a lot more that gets into it so one is prepared so let me tell you before my first screenings uh, it's it's a nerve-wracking uh, you know moment I, I am not even there for the first screening I don't want to witness what happens after that um, you know I feel very blessed that, you know, I have done two films only out of India. Uh, the rest I've done outside the country and both won the National Film Awards. And um, you can do a Google search. We don't have a single negative review, which is, I don't know, maybe it is the grace of God. I don't know. But, you know, especially films like this, you can get into a lot of trouble. So I just think something worked. Um, we were very, very disciplined about sensitizing the audiences, and I think the critics got it. And I would say, whenever we get an award or there is a recognition, for us, it's not about the awards and recognition. It's about giving the issue of gender justice the deserved attention. So every time this happens, we are like, yes, the conversation continues. And that's what it does. Yes, ma'am. I truly agree. And your journey is incredibly inspire inspiring. And with the gradual and essential changes happening in the world's mentality, what do you think is the next crucial step in making our society, society utopian for all women? Can you uh, repeat this question again? Yes. What do you think is the next crucial step in making our society more utopian for all women? I think it's about changing the narrative and it's about making boys and men a critical part of the movement for a safer and equitable world. And I think that will be the game changer. And for that, we have to make sure that there is a lot of parity in many other areas like education, like opportunities. But as they say, you know, it's not about just making laws. It's about changing mindsets. So when mindsets are changed, everything else will fall in place. And that's what we have to do. Each one of us has to change the narrative on gender injustice. And when I say that, I mean boys and girls, men and women. This is extremely inspirational for all of us here today and we could not agree more with you. Can you tell us about your future projects and what do they focus on? So my future projects, my head is spinning so much nowadays that I've stopped sleeping because I have so many ideas uh, that are 
uh, brewing in my head. There are so many compelling issues. Um, I keep getting torn from, you know, uh, this global issue to issues in India. But I also, what happens is, for me, it's not just about making a film. I stay with the film for two years to unleash impact. So whatever decision I take next, um, it has to be something that I'm fully committed to because I will be with that film for the next three years. So there are a lot of ideas brewing, but I hope the story about showcasing very strong women unfolds. But as I say, I never get to choose the film. The film, the right film will choose me. Mama, I think I speak for everyone when I say that all of us would be very excited for any of your upcoming projects. Lovely. And um, could you also please throw some light on how important are awards to measure the success of the film? So I had uh, said that, um, you know, I'd mentioned it before, awards and recognition um, is something that all of us, uh, we enjoy it right? It, it becomes a fruit of your labor. But in documentaries, I feel um, it's about opening doors. For example, when we got the President's Award, the National Film Award, it opened so many doors for people to feel secure to screen it. I mean, you know, uh, this school is screening a National Award winning film, so they feel secure all good, good to go, right? Um, with partnerships and recognitions from United Nations, it opens the movement. You cannot do it alone. Uh, you know, the fact that the film is going across 71 countries is very big to take the conversation across. Um, so I think what awards do is it keeps the conversation relevant. It keeps the conversation going. And I think we must keep talking about it until a time comes when the need is not there. And I hope that comes. And I hope a time comes when I don't have to make these films either. Right? So we are waiting for that tomorrow. But until then, let's keep it going. Right? That's what it is. This discussion has been so fruitful. We've got so many key takeaways that we should all weave into our lives. Uh, in the end, what one advice would you like to leave with us and with the youth of this new generation? I would say the most important thing that each one of you have to realize is you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable to take on an issue and amplify its urgency. You are unstoppable to unleash movements of change. So the one biggest takeaway, and I hope the advice that each one of you take away from this series is, you have the power, but use it wisely. With this, we come to the end of this fruitful master talk. Thank you, Dr. Vibha, for spending your valuable time with us today. I'm sure we all learned a lot uh, through this series. And um, we, I'm sure we'll all incorporate that in our daily lives as well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. I want to say I loved your questions. You all have done a lot of homework, and it's kept me on my toes. So thank you for a very invigorating session and more power to all of you. Thank you. Thank you to the team out there.